Podcast today. I'm joined by G Bautista, Gay Bautista from UCR, what and we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff about the music industry. Primarily, the biggest problems in the music industry, but we're also going to tie it into a lot of the content that just released from you. Mm-hmm. Some music videos and new content, so we'll talk about that as well. But mm-hmm. just to get this started right away, what do you think is some of the biggest problems in the music industry right now? Um, number one is mainly like it's. It's difficult for a lot of content creators to make, uh, I mean, to get their names known, but at mm-hmm. the same time, it's not. You yeah. know what I mean? It's difficult because, like, um, everything's highly oversaturated, right? And I like, I've talked to like a couple people who go to like music school mm-hmm. and they're like teachers and all that stuff. They say, like, like it's kind of hard for them to make money now because yep. back in the day, like, if you were a drummer, you get paid like you know six hundred a session or a thousand dollars a session, you know. Yeah. But now it's like everything's very electronic, and you could just make it on the go. And a lot of people just they just create a bunch of shit and they just put it out, mm-hmm. you know. And on the other hand, it's pretty good right now because it's more fluid than ever. Yeah. Because like now you get people just blowing up off of viral videos. Yeah. You got TikTok, mm-hmm. you know, you got Twitter, you got trailer videos, mm-hmm. you got Instagram, you know, you got hashtags, you got memes. Yeah. So it's like, it's just a matter of like knowing how to maneuver yourself in this very diverse and chaotic market. space. Yeah. Cha- chaotic space, you know, and whoever catches the gold, you know, like, catch it. You feel me? Yeah. Because right now, yeah, the biggest problem that was listed out for the music industry is just that there's no, there's a lot of money in it, but the people that are actually getting the money, it's a small portion. So yeah. only fourteen percent of artists are currently are making like legit money off their music. The rest of it, eighty six percent, aren't, and that's because right now, like Spotify, they completely changed the dynamic of music. I mean, right now you get point zero zero six cents yeah per stream yeah. yeah that even for thousands of streams you're barely making a couple bucks. Mm-hmm. So you have to actually be making like a song that gets an average of a hundred thousand streams consistently if you want to be making money off your music. So it's shifted the dynamic that your music now is not necessarily where the cash is coming from. Mm-hmm. It's coming from other venues. Even like Dr. Dre, in November, he he stated because he's been pretty quiet recently about like music industry. But yeah. he, he he came out on an interview and he stated that uh, he thinks that there's way too much quantity coming out and mm-hmm. not necessarily quality. He's talking about the rap industry primarily because there's a lot of mumble rappers and yeah. all that kind of stuff. But I I think that's a case for the entire music industry. Yeah, there's just too much quantity and not quality. So what do you think uh, artists should kind of perceive what these famous people like Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, all these artists have been saying about the music industry for the last couple of years? I mean, they're right. And I also think the other side is right, too, because like on the other end, like people are just trying to blow up. Yeah, of you know, and that's why people were like ever since Russ came out with that technique of like, again, like a song a week, mm-hmm. you know, it's just. It just opens like a new perspective of a, of how to blow up, yeah. and I, I really think that neither side is wrong. Mm-hmm. It just comes to the down to the artist of how the artist wants to be perceived by the public and how they feel comfortable, you know, doing their work. If they want to just do a song a week, I think artists should do it. If they want to, like, you know, I I personally do like a song a month or mm-hmm. you know, drop an EP every two years, you know. As long as you're consistent in what you do and like it represents your brand, I feel like you shouldn't even trip because like in the end, like you're just trying to make bread. And if you can make bread the way that you're doing yep. and it's working for you, I think you should continue to do. But if it's not working and you've been doing the same technique, I think you should reevaluate what you do and just try to, you know, create something. You know, that's like that's kind of the wave that I'm on. Just go wherever it goes because the music market, man, any song can blow up now. Yeah. It don't matter how good it is. It don't matter how bad it is. Anything can blow up. No, I agree with that. And, yeah. I, and I think that it kind of goes back to like, you're not necessarily making money off the music nowadays, but you are making money off your brand. Yeah. So I think every artist should consider themselves not they should consider themselves as a business, not necessarily just as an artist, because at the end of the day, your brand is what's going to carry you. Your mm-hmm. brand is what's going to get you those performances, those merchandising, that money gigs, those mm-hmm. licensing gigs, all that kind of stuff, acting gigs, everything. It can mm-hmm. venture out of it. So I think artists should focus primarily on the brand development and actually getting a business team around them mm-hmm. uh, to propel them if they don't have that knowledge themselves. Yeah, no, I completely agree. It's just like a lot of them just don't know, you know? Mm-hmm. They just I, I completely understand because you know I'm I'm one of them you know we're all struggling except like I have been blessed to just have a lot of people I've I've been blessed to just be open to a lot of perspective you know yeah. 
first person that helped me out a lot was like Adam. Mm-hmm. You know, Adam's like, he's like my best friend. You know, produces uh, some of some of my songs. You know, he helped me through. He was there from the beginning. You yeah. know, and he always helped me with like a lot of creative advice on how to uh, present myself on my Instagram and how to you know how to like uh, be perceived by your audience mm-hmm. and that like opened more doors for me to have more perspective towards other people you know like yeah. i met you you know you opened like my on you know how the market kind of works i met ethan you know ethan's like guy who kind of sound engineers some of my music or most of it mm-hmm. and uh he you know he shows me another side of the world you know it's just like and as long as you're open to perspective mm-hmm. and not just you know in your own world and you're open to community that's like a lot a lot of artists like that you know they're just like they're just so caught up in their own world and mm-hmm. it's so hard for like an artist to understand the value of what it means to be an entertainer or like a performer you know like a, an entertainer someone who like i feel like somebody who's like always surrounded by people and like you aren't an artist i mean you are an artist but you don't get to the position that you are because you worked hard for that position it's like more like the people put you there mm-hmm. you know what i mean everything is t- like in the end is like the equation all comes down to what the people want you know yeah. what i mean it's just how you put yourself out there and like um how open you are to willing to try new things out mm-hmm. you know it's just i mean that's my opinion yeah no i think that's a that's a good point i and i think that kind of goes back to uh artists right now that i mean there's a bunch of content obviously non-stop coming out there's music left and right every single genre of music there's non-stop content which is hard to differentiate in it but i think as a as an artist as you start progressing and maturing you do have to build a team around you yeah. what you just kind of brought up to give you those different perspectives because if you're kind of stuck on your own like i'm only doing what i want to do mm-hmm. kind of thing at the end of the day your content is what you want to do but the progression as an artist shouldn't just you shouldn't be involved with every aspect because then mm-hmm. you're going to spread yourself way too thin mm-hmm. and you're not going to be able to do what you're there to do which is being the creative mm-hmm. so a lot of artists i think should be kind of formulating a team around them based off the skills or the gaps that they might not have i i think you're right but i also think that the artist before doing that they should focus i mean for me when i started off i didn't have any support yeah. you feel me and like i i, I started off by myself mm-hmm. you know in the garage with you know just laptop and you know just just me myself and i had to work on myself first i feel like if the artist is comfortable with who they are as a person and like comfortable with their craft and what they do then i feel like they can branch out to other people i mean that's like how i started off because Mm -hmm. once i was comfortable with who i was and i knew what exactly were my strengths and what exactly were my weaknesses i was able to look towards people who were better than me at certain areas and or who could fill out the gaps that i Mm -hmm. needed you know and i i really think that you know if if you're comfortable with who you are and then i think you should branch out but if you don't have those skill sets that you need to fulfill your obligation or your part within your music then i think you should focus on that first before you go and reaching out to anybody else because i've encountered people the course of my life that like that don't necessarily have the like they have the idea and it's beautiful you know Mm -hmm. it's like great but it's like they haven't solidified their craft mm-hmm. in, which, in, which, in the area that they're trying to do for them to depend on others. And so therefore, they don't have that credibility for me to help that person out. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think that's like an important thing. I feel like the artist or whoever's trying to make an idea or something like that, they should first fine tune whatever they're trying to bring mm-hmm. out to life to the point that it could be tangible to other people to listen to or to believe in it, you know? an idea is just an idea yep you know but like how can i you know it's like you know like when it comes to like like putting money into a product you know Mm -hmm. it's like i don't know what i'm investing in if you don't like show me like a clear idea of what you exactly Exactly. you want me to do Mm -hmm. but yeah that's my opinion yeah no i think i I think that's a really well well put because i mean you have to know what you want to do before you tell it to the world kind of thing Mm -hmm. so i think that's good good approach for young artists especially is kind of fine-tune what you want to do and then kind of push forward from there but i think the other part um to bring up is as you're producing more content and you want to make yourself more credible um it's investing into your own craft i think that's another point um when it comes to like music videos and Mm -hmm. the content you push out and photographers and all that kind of stuff because to see a lot of artists that 
uh, they want to progress and they want to become more credible and they want to get gigs left and right and get booked. Uh, but they struggle with that because mm -hmm. they don't really have that that piece of credibility for themselves to even get booked. Mm -hmm. um, so what would, your, what would your advice be for artists that kind of want to solidify the credibility for themselves? I mean, just go out there, man. You gotta, you gotta earn your, you gotta earn it. You feel <laughs> me? You just gotta do it. Like, cause I came up out here in LA for like one year and I was like homeless, you know? And then I was just doing a bunch of like open mic shows or like whatever show had me. Mm -hmm. And then I started, people started recognizing me, start developing your name as you go out there, mm -hmm. uh, talk to as many people as I could. Mm -hmm. And then over time, I just started getting gigs offered to me, Yep, you know? Currently, I'm not doing like any shows right now because I've just been focused on creating my content. Yeah. But it's like you just go wherever the vibe goes. Just be open to living. Like if you really want to become an artist and a performer, then you just got to go and perform. Mm -hmm. Start off by open mics. Start your networking down. Talk to the head of the guys. Talk to people around you because anybody within your circle can become anybody. Like I was, I performed at like Santa Monica, like two years ago mm -hmm. and it was this one guy named ray and he was like a great crazy like performer he like performed by himself all of his instruments and yeah. like two years later like he's like he performed on like a tv show he's wow. a, he has like over forty thousand followers now mm -hmm. he's like you never know just gotta start getting your networking and just by talking to people yeah, yeah that's what you gotta do just like Network, build on your craft, and develop relationships, mm -hmm. you know? And then people will fuck with your energy, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's how people believe in you. You got to prove to them and prove to yourself that you believe in your idea, you know? You mm -hmm. can't be, like, cocky when you have nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like I borderline cocky confident mm -hmm. i'm not gonna lie i'm i have my flaws but like i'm confident because i've i've worked hard bro like mm -hmm. i've worked really hard to like to do everything that i do right now yeah and like i'm grateful that's one thing i'm grateful for all the support that i've gotten within like the things that i'm able to do you know despite like it like everybody giving me like a discount for what i do yeah it's because they believe in me you know yeah I but i mean going back like you, you you're, you're saying like yeah you're borderline confidence as cocky but i i think you can actually like you put in the work for it like your actions match what you're speaking of because well you're currently still working multiple jobs you're still trying to hustle and getting that money behind the scenes right yeah and then that money you're getting behind the scenes a lot of people don't realize that you're investing right back into your own craft mm -hmm. so i mean you just came out with your music video slide through yeah. And in that, I mean, how much did you invest into that production? Because you had a dance team, like you actually put the time and the money into creating that piece of art. Yeah, so um, I had to pay the camera guy, and then I had to book the barbershop. I'm just crazy. I can't believe I booked the barbershop. And then <laughs> I had to get a dance team. I, I, I just, fuck it. It was like my birthday weekend, so I was like, listen. <laughs> I had to get a fucking dance team, and then I had to rent a car out <laughs> so i bought the fuck out and then like when it came to throwing the party at my house i had to like get all the jungle juice and that cost money too <laughs> i had to pay for my homies gas and it's just like I, I i was running the whole thing yeah you know and like i had paid for the beat even though i produced most of my content this beat was so hard i had to pay for it <laughs> i got my homie to get on the verse i paid for the beat to get mixed and engineered by mm -hmm. um this guy named johnny garza mm -hmm. he like he uh he's like an engineer out in the Bay Area, he's like worked with like Russ and Rex Life Raj, people who I admire. Yeah. But um, yeah, he was dope. So like everything came together naturally. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't know, man. Sometimes it costs like over 600. Sometimes it costs like a grand, two grand. But like, yeah, I don't know. It just came together great. Yeah. But I, I think the important thing to realize here is that, yes, you're investing both your time and your money to make this happen. Mm -hmm. But that content itself, because of the production value, solidifies that credibility that we're talking about oh dude it's hella good when you <laughs> want to work with like people you just show them your work and they're like i'm sold exactly you know it's like is this hard for like somebody to pitch your music to somebody when they don't know mm -hmm. what you're about yeah yeah like let's say like um one big thing that artists do that like people who i talk to um they uh they show me their ig mm -hmm. right and whatever is on their ig is like 
I judge them based off of that. Yeah. Mainly, most of the time. But sometimes you, I, I could catch a vibe with somebody and I could like fuck with them and like we make content off of that. But mainly, like, I look at your IG because an IG to me is like a portfolio now. Yeah. If it don't look aesthetically pleasing to me and if I listen to the music and I don't like it, I won't work with you mm -hmm. or I won't follow you back either. Yeah. But if you're a cool person, like, that to me goes a long way too. A vibe is important in music. Yeah. No, but I, I, I think that's a kind of good point when it comes to the IG and your own portfolio and your kind of social media. Your social media nowadays is your brand appeal. So, like, how your YouTube account with your music videos happens, how your Instagram page looks with photography and your branding and all that kind of stuff, having a website, having all these things as an artist, that's what's going to get you to that kind of that next stage and next stage because then if you send that to a place and get booked, they can understand who you are mm -hmm. and they're going to trust you compared to the other 100 artists that are sending the same stuff to them. Yeah. Even if you guys are all on the same talent level, they're going to book you just because of the fact that you're appealing to them. Yeah, you know, it's just because, you know, it's... I'm fucking serious. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't fucking play. You feel me? <laughs> I'm putting in my own money into this shit. And most motherfuckers, they be like, they be looking for a handout. Like, I, I, I try to look for handouts. Fuck it. I'm, I'm lying. I need a handout once in a while. Mm -hmm. But like, I put all, all my money. Like, bro, I've invested over 10 grand into my music. Mm -hmm. And I know I've done it wrong for the past four <laughs> years because I didn't go nowhere with that tank. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, but you learn and you live and you learn. Like, you just got to go out there and risk it. You feel me? Like, a lot, of, a lot of people come, like, I talk to just, like, they want to create all these beautiful ideas and they're all creative, right? But it's just the fact that you just got to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just fucking do it, bro. <laughs> Who gives a fuck what people think? Insecure about what other people say about what yeah, they That's your do? own craft. That's your own fucking craft. And if you make money off of it, you can catch a bag and fucking buy yourself a new house. Like, <laughs> you're overthinking it. People are going to hate. But that means people are paying attention to what you're saying. And they're hating because they ain't also doing it. So They ain't doing shit. Yeah. You feel me? All they do is create hate, which is good. Like, I don't give a fuck about what people people think about me i'm fucking happy with who i am because i know i got people in my lives that care about me genuinely care about me I, outside of that like i can pay my bills you feel me and like anything else bro if i once i cash this bag from this song it's like i'm set you know what i mean this <laughs> no, is I like it. no it's definitely it's a good perspective to look at stuff i think the uh the other actually major problem that's kind of now circulating in the music industry is that uh there's a lot less long-term record deals or record label deals in the market. And that causes it, that's a good and a bad thing. Like a, a lot of artists like to be independent now, mm -hmm. but the issue is that by not having these long-term right, record label contracts, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't have that longevity in somebody's music. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot harder for a younger artist to kind of penetrate into this old school traditional market because of the way that the record deals currently are working. Yeah. So what do you think as an artist, like when do you think an artist should be kind of ready to jump in and pursue a record deal. All right, bro. I, I say go everywhere the vibe goes. <laughs> I think if you think you're ready for it, I think you should always have a backup plan though. Like, yeah. like, like not like not say like fucking like I'm gonna be a professor after this mm -hmm. shit. No, just say like, like I'm gonna do this record deal, right? And I'm gonna try to catch this bag that they're giving me. But while I'm doing that, I'm gonna figure out like another scheme so that once I get out of this, mm -hmm. I already have something ready for me. Yep. You know what I mean? I feel like that's a lot of things that a lot of people in general are like, they don't think about what's next. Yeah. You know, like college students, they graduate college. They don't know what the fuck is next after college. All they know is I gotta pay out this fucking debt and shit like that. That's like a universal thing. You always gotta plan after what the shit is done because like in the end, like, are you always trying to become a signed artist? And if you know your ultimate result that you ultimately might, like, you know, might be independent, then you should focus on what's going to get you towards that, mm -hmm. you know, independent round. Just focus on establishing solid relationships within wherever the fuck you're working with, you know, you know, develop the, that credibility so that when you get out and finally become independent, you have all these resources that you can reach out yourself yep. and just put in your own money. But like, be good with managing your money. I mean, I'm not good right now, but I'm kind of, I mean, I'm single, so it's like, <laughs> and you're saying you can manage your money, but um, yeah, just be good with managing your money and make sure that you have a solid idea of what you're trying to aim for. Mm -hmm. And if, fuck it, if the record deal comes, I say fucking jump on it. Mm -hmm. Read the contract. Obviously, yeah, read contracts. That, that was the one thing I was going to bring up is uh, a couple of things I think artists should think about is don't jump on every record deal. One is 
choose the record labels that you would actually want to be on. I think that's number one, because a lot of times people just jump on whatever. And then two, make sure that record deals is in your best interest. Yeah. Because a lot of the times these there's, there's a lot of horror stories about these really big record labels and what they do is they shelf people's music so that they never get to ever put that music out mm. and then they own it. And then if they ever try to get off the label, now they have to pay for all the, oh, the, the fees and everything lawyer else, shit. the lawyer stuff. And like, it becomes a nightmare. I, I've heard of nightmare stories. So, I guess my my advice when it comes to an artist would be treat this as a business. I mean, if you're signing a contract for something that's your own content, make sure that you still have ownership of what you're making because mm-hmm. you're, you're the one who's cr- producing this. They're just the one that is distributing and marketing it for you. Yeah, and also another thing is before you sign the deal, make sure you... I mean, for me personally, I feel like I wouldn't be showed because I've already like put out a lot of music mm-hmm. that, you know, it's impossible to show me. Mm-hmm. You know, like I wouldn't... I wouldn't want to show. Fuck that. Mm-hmm. Fuck that. If you gonna have the feeling that they're gonna shelve your ass, that's why you gotta catch a vibe. You feel me? Like you gotta be in the meeting. Uh, bring your white tone out. You know, speak white. <laughs> speak that business tone high. Yes. Uh, I'm sure the six percent of my album could probably do you some good. You know. <laughs> but but you know, like you just you talk the shit out, and if it works for you, great. If it doesn't fucking work for you, just go wherever the energy goes, bro. That's. I'm only I'm I'm about riding this wave right now. Mm-hmm. You know, no, create the wave. You know, but like ride whatever is inside you. Yeah, you know what no, I mean. Do, Pause. Do what you think is in your best interest always. But uh, and then I guess the last problem, major problem in the music industry is going to be uh, getting those live performances, getting live bookings, because that's where the majority of your money actually comes from. Yeah. Um, and I mean that that's a that's a big problem. I mean, we talked earlier about the credibility and how that helps you get into these performances. But I think the uh, the biggest problem is a lot of times artists think that they're just going to get automatically booked into a big venue. Mm-hmm. And you got to kind of go through the small itty bitty route first and kind of build that credibility, make sure that you're a performer. Because a lot of times someone might be really good at making music, mm-hmm. but they're terrible at performing that music. Oh, And that's the difference that makes, a like in my opinion, like a solidified credible artist is if they can actually perform their music as well and get the audience engaged with what they're doing. Because if you can't get the audience moving, no bar, no club will ever book you. Cause that's the whole point of it. I wouldn't say that's true. I mean, you could, there's people who make money performing, they're shit performers. I would say like, as long as you, you making a bag, you doing what you gotta do. And like, it depends on what your goals are. And then as an artist, like, if you're really trying to become like the best out there, you gotta have like some performance stage presence. Mm-hmm. You feel me about like, in the end, like, if your goal is to get a bag and then just say, fuck it, you feel me? Like, you know, there's like a lot of, famous comedians based off of like tiktok and like i've been hearing like a lot of conversations about how some of them you know that are famous you know go up on stage because like they bring people to bars you know? yeah well that's different I, I, that that's still at least gauging them like if you can bring people in of course a bar or a club is going to book you but i'm saying as somebody who's kind of up and coming as an artist you probably don't have that kind of reach so no. to be able to get a bar or a club to book you you got to get people in that bar and club active with what you're doing because otherwise they're definitely not going to book you again oh no yeah there's definitely you gotta be good you gotta be good with your sauce they gotta like your sauce exactly you know what I mean? if you could layer it you feel me you could play it they can dig your vibe that's mm-hmm. it everybody just wants a good vibe and as long as you bring a good vibe you think you you set yeah fuck it fuck yeah it. but mm-hmm. i i think the other thing that uh, artists should consider when you are going to gigs or if you go to house party or whatever get literally pay a videographer or photographer or somebody and get content from that stuff because you need to prove that you've done it like, oh, yeah, yo. just by performing there doesn't mean anything. Yo, yo, one <laughs> big thing I learned in history class is that if it was never documented and never, ne- never happened, you know what I mean? Like, is this? I always do my best to like record everything that I do with mm-hmm. like anything that has to do with like public shit. If I'm performing, like, like I'm gonna try to get like yo take a picture of me or some shit like that. If I'm like, you know, if I'm anywhere that has to do with like artistry wise take a picture or some shit like that post it on my ig story mm-hmm. it's like it says i'm doing shit i'm not like you know i'm always doing something fuck it i want people to know that mm-hmm. you know and just your goal is like to make sure that people know that you're doing it a lot of people like they like to like be ghost you know mm-hmm. fuck it. that's their way i like to be open with everything yeah why not yeah i mean, I, I like that I, I think transparency and documentation of everything is good but it really depends on your perception because i mean there's artists once you're big enough time like you can go ghost everything and come back and yeah, push it right you know, out but yeah but like you know it just depends on how you want to ride your wave like everybody's an artist like i feel like everybody's an artist even though some people can't you know do create the way they do but 
people just want to like just go with whatever your vibe is telling you yeah you never know because your intuition could like lead you to things you would never think of but also be open to perspective too perspective and vibe <laughs> perspective of perspective be open to perspective plus vibe equals i don't know I don't know where it leads you, but a G Bautista. Oh no, I don't know. It's brought it's brought me here. You feel me? We out here. You feel me? Still trying to get the bag, but I'm happy. I'm grateful. I'm I'm blessed to have people in my life, and yeah, dude. Um, but shout out to Kenny, Kenny Wayne, bro, getting on the song, and Adam produced the beat, West Coast shit, on the music video shit, and then. It's fucking crazy. We did this in fucking Riverside. <laughs> Actually, to talk about that. So, I mean, this song obviously is a banger. So, yeah. what what was your kind of thought process? Why did you want to make this kind of a song? I know I know that, like, right when you heard the beat, you're like, I got to get on this beat. So, mm-hmm. right when you heard Adam's beat, you're like, I got to get that right now. Yeah. And then what was your inspiration between kind of making this more kind of upbeat, fun vibe song? Um... I don't know. I just thought the beat was hard, and <laughs> it's just like West Coast. I'm from the West Coast, and there hasn't been like a Nate Dogg sound in a while. Yeah, no, I, so I, that's I was, what I really got from the song. And I just like you know I wanted to bring that back, and having Kenny, the rapper dude on it, just brought like a whole changed the whole thing. Is and he uh, is he from the Inland Empire? He's from the Bay Area. The Bay, hell yeah. All producer from the Bay Area, <laughs> your boy from the Bay Area, Kenny from the Bay. It's like an all bet. Like it's just, it's just like young cats who just want to make it out of the industry. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, Adam sent me that beat because he said he he had a mind of getting like a bigger celebrity lady chick on the song, but she took too long, and I was like, I already have a hook in mind. Send it to me. I'll buy, I'll pay for it. I paid. That's like the one of the few beats where I've actually paid for the beat. <laughs> And I paid for it, layered it the same day I got it, and then recorded the shit. And then I already had a second verse, but then they told me to Adam. I got it mixed, and then Adam heard it, finally heard the song, which is fucking weird. And he's like, yeah, bro, you got to take off your second verse, even though I paid for the engineer. Yeah. It. So I had to like take my second verse off and got Kenny on it, and he added that. He added that would have needed, and then... It was fucking hard, dude. The song's <laughs> fucking great. I, I love the song. It's like the video guy, when he was editing it, it's like, dude, I, he liked the song. That's rare because like when you make videos or when you're shooting with people, it's like you get tired of songs. Well, yeah, because it's, it's, it's because of the job and you just hear the same thing over, over and over again. Yeah, yeah, but that's the one song that people like. The dance team, bro. Yeah. Everybody like the dance team. I got them. They all fuck with it. You know, it's just fucking the barbershop. They all fuck with it. Mm-hmm. And just like people will fuck with it, which is fucking great. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's one of those songs that like, it's just an upbeat song. Like you, you bump that first thing Saturday morning. You're good to go. You bump that at a party. You're good to go. Yo, like it's it, anytime, yeah, you it's, know, slide <laughs> on through. Man. Yeah. Oh, that song is so dope. I like it. I love Adam for the beat. Even though I have to pay for it. <laughs> Fuck it. Everybody gotta eat. Everybody gotta eat. Everybody gotta eat. And you know, yeah, every Kenny Kenny he's from the Bay Area. He's been doing music for like so long. I met him in, at at the college. Yeah. And Adam, where he's been my best friend since like high school. And then yeah, I've been doing music. He got me into producing. So if it wasn't for him, I would have been doing what you're doing. Yeah, I would I'll probably be a lawyer. <laughs> more, <laughs> more stable. You know, <laughs> living uh Living the Christian life. Is that what they call it? <laughs> I would have that, you know, that comb to the left. And I'm like, hi, sir. How's it going? Oh, Can I help you with your case, please? I'm trying to get this. Uh, no, nah, but now, nah, dude, nah, I'm just, you know, making music and more loose, and more nonchalant about a lot of things. Yeah. And just take life as it goes, you know? I got you. So is there uh, any new music or any new content that we should anticipate coming? Yeah, I have another music video coming out uh, maybe the upcoming month. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it features uh, a little dear friend of mine. And uh, this video is also cool. We shot it at a weird place. It was, But I have a music video coming out and then... I have like a bunch of songs in the vault. I might drop my first all Spanish song in the next couple months too. I'm just focusing on singles right now. I'm not working on no 
EP or nothing? EP, I mean, if I do, it's just I go by the vibe. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like it's the right vibe to go for me right now because I don't know. I just don't feel like it's the time. And when I do, it's like I have a bunch of material, but I feel like I'm just going to create something all from scratch. I yeah. just go wherever my vibe tells me. That's how I made all my music. Yeah. Yeah, but fuck it. Whatever comes, comes and just fucking get it. You know what I mean? All right. So, I mean, everybody should go listen to Slide Through. Everybody Slide Through. Watch the music video as well. Featuring Kenny Wayne, bro. Produced by Adam Mirage. And, you know, I like to thank everybody who pulled up to the party. <laughs> everybody, man, everybody was cool. I had ice cream cake. You there feel me? And then I like to thank the dance team. You feel me? Uh, they pulled they, they pulled through. I like to thank, you know, man with the barber guy. And Adrian and everybody at the barbershop for allowing me to like book their barbershop. I can't mm -hmm. believe I fucking booked the barbershop <laughs> for the video. And like, I'm just gonna say, man, you can do it all, bro. You yeah. don't need you don't need no fucking record label to book a place, bro. You just need some bread, bro. Yeah. Which is why people get a record label, like, cause they need money. They, they need money, yeah. But like, you know, there's so much content out there, and so many videographers, and so many people just want work. They just want to get their work out there. Yeah. You can just con talk to everybody, like, hey, bro, like. I'm trying to shoot a video. I could slide you some. You feel me? And like you just you just develop relationships over time. And next thing you know, you're working with the next Walt Disney. <laughs> Except take away the 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 negative parts of Walt Disney. <laughs> Let's focus on the pros. There's a lot of negative things. You know what I mean? You could be working with the next Dave Chappelle. You know, never you yeah, never know. You never know. You never know who you talk to. You never yeah. know who's coming up. And that's why you got to respect everybody on their own path. Cause yeah. uh, you can't judge people, man. Like no, like I, every everybody like. Everybody got to start somewhere, so you really don't know where the talent's gonna lead. Nah, I just don't. I just don't work with people who who are weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, I worked with crazy people before, and I just don't work with them ever again. It's just like, just don't say nothing bad to them, and just uh, go about your life and wish them a hallelujah, and maybe next time. <laughs> you know, maybe once you meet Jesus or something, get your old shit together, maybe we can talk. <laughs> but like, you know, I think it's cool. Just work with, network with as many people as you can. Be open to people. And you never know. Even like people who just like, I think it's important to be involved in almost every event. It don't matter if it's a party, if it's a church or if it's whatever. Talk to everybody because everybody is connected to everybody. Yeah. I don't know how the fuck that does work, but everybody's connected to everybody. It's fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To close this out, uh, you got any final piece of advice for uh, any kind of musicians, students, anybody's pursuing the craft of being an artist? Uh, I just only have one advice. I think a lot of people need to talk more to other people. It's like off tangent of music and all that stuff. I think it's socializing. A lot of people are afraid to talk to other people. Mm -hmm. And I feel like everybody, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say everybody should, but like, a lot of the people who complain about not being able to socialize, I think it's like the first step is just saying hi. Yeah. You know, like you never know like what you, that door may open, you mm -hmm. know? I think it's important to be open to a lot of things as long as it doesn't compromise your fundamental principles. And uh, if you, you want to create something, create it. We're living in a time where like you can just put anything out and that shit could become a hit or whatever the idea is, you know? YouTube channel, TikTok video, whatever the fuck it is. I think people should just create it. We're in a time within this country, especially because, I mean, there's a lot of opportunities in all the other countries, but like within the United States, known for like its entertainment industry, yeah. there's so many opportunities. You could you could make a name for yourself off of just doing whatever the fuck you do. There's a kid who makes mm -hmm. multi-million, there's millions of dollars of just toy videos. Yeah. And kids watch it. So I just think, bro, just whatever idea you got, just put that shit out there. You never know. Just let it fall, whatever it falls. And I don't know. You should, you should could become the next Bill Gates. There we go. Yeah. That's I, I love it. I love it. So pretty much learn not to care and just continue with your hustle. Yeah, continue with your hustle. Respect other people and just live life. Better than I could have said it myself. So uh, yeah. it's a good way to close it out. Appreciate you being on the show, G. Bautista. Thank and, you, bro. Uh, can't wait to hear more music from you. Yeah, yeah.